Hi, I'm John Twist of University Motors. Today we're in the Annex. So Dayton will take a little sweep around here. This is where we keep all of our used parts and odd things and my home, uh, some of the stuff that doesn't fit my house and it's just a hodgepodge of this and that. But, and we store customer cars here when they're down for a while for whatever reason. We're waiting on parts. There's one back here waiting on an engine. And uh, anyway, so this one came in and it didn't run as well as it used to. Owners complain. Just doesn't have the oomph it used to have. What do you do first? Check the compression. 160, 140, 80, 160. Now you're allowed about 10% variation. So that 16 to 140 is on the outside of, of your, you know, outside of that 10%, but, well, it's pretty close. So the question is, how come the one's 80? Well, because the exhaust valve has failed, and sure enough, we took the head off, the exhaust valve had failed. But I found something else interesting here, too, and Dayton's going to uh, come down here and take a look. See how the piston here has been punched with a three. Well, the front piston has been punched with a one. The fourth piston has been punched four times, which create little hot spots. Real bad technique. <laughs> but help me out, this piston isn't the same as this piston. No wonder this is 140. This has got much less of a dish to it than this piston does. And we're going to find out exactly how much less of a dish by using a burette and a glass plate. So here we go. Glass plate, burette, grease. So we're going to put some grease on the top of the cylinder head here. Put our glass plate down against it. And we're going to fill the, uh, let me get a good starting point here with my burette. And we're going to start at, oh, let's see, we're going to start at, Oh, this looks to me like, come on, baby, 0.6. We're starting at 0.6. Of course, I don't have a pencil, so we're going to have to trust my creepy memory here. 0.6. And now we're going to fill this up with water. And as soon as we get up to about the top, then we're going to have to fiddle with our with the position of the engine so we know it's right at TDC. Okay. Now just a minute here while we move the engine incrementally. I'd say that's about it. And it would appear as though we're, we're all but full. So we started at 0.6 and we've ended at 26.4. 26.4 minus 0.6 is 25.8. Isn't that correct? I think so. So that's 25.8. Which is the which is the uh, the capacity of the engine below the deck on top of the piston, 25.8. Let's do the next one now. Now we're going to prep the next cylinder. Actually, what I've got to do is get some of the over in the shop. I'd have compressed air available to me, and that'd be pretty handy. But here, I just have a rag. Oh, the other thing, Dayton's going to come in close. We've got a little chip out of this piston here, too. So I just had the customer here about half an hour ago, and I showed him all this stuff, and he said, yeah, let's put in a set of pistons. That, of course, makes sense. Well, if we had a single 20-over piston that was the same as these, we could do that, but the chance of that 
we got a lot of used pistons, but the chance of having that piston in that size is probably pretty slight. So we're starting again here at 26 point six four twenty six point four that's where we ended up last time and we shouldn't we're not going to change the position of the engine now because that's uh that's fixed and this is taking a lot less fluid that is for sure i've got some air back here that I'd like to get rid of. Although it can't be that much. But we're after accuracy here, so. And if I try to turn the plate, that isn't gonna work. So I, I think I think we're probably there, except for this little bit that just won't won't come out here so anyway we're just gonna have to suffer that so now we are at thirty-eight point six thirty-eight point six minus so when you're over sixty even if you're not pad of paper pen pretty handy so the first time we got 25.8 cc's in the top of the cylinder. On the three pistons, we'll assume they're all the same, we get 12.2. So that's a dramatic difference one to the other. Absolutely dramatic. That's enough to change our compression ratio by point and a half, something like that. So it's important, of course, that the engine works consistently, which means that each cylinder works as the other cylinders. Same compression ratio, same valve lap, uh, lash, the cams working the same, the mixture's the same, the spark plug gap is the same. You're going for the same in every cylinder. There's a lot more to it, uh, especially for the racers who are trying to eke out that last one one hundredth of a horsepower, which they believe will in enable them to beat their their uh, contemporary but of course it doesn't because the most important part of a race car is the nut behind the steering wheel hey john twist university motors this is 2015 coming to our summer party august 8th big time featuring the mga 1500 douglas walker park we're gonna have a really good time out there so that's August 8th, go on our website, take a look. Thanks for everybody who's looking at our website. It's very, very kind. Google does pay us incrementally, but they do pay us and we got lots of views. So that's, that's a good thing. And I just took a look at one of my most popular ones this morning to realize that it was shot on this ancient camera and it has degraded since. So I think maybe some of the really good videos that we did early on will redo. So look for a, another, uh, an upgraded explanation of the four synchro gearbox coming out real soon. Hey, until then, safety fast. <laughs>